Hey guys, welcome to the sidechain compression tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about what sidechain compression or sidechain ducking is, the uses for it, and I'm going to show you four methods for implementing it in your projects. So, what's sidechain compression? Sidechain compression or sidechain ducking is the process of modulating or controlling the level of a sound based on the input from another sound. Now, it's called sidechain compression because compressors are the most common way of achieving this effect. However, they're certainly not the only way, as you're going to see in the examples to come. There are primarily two uses for sidechain compression. Uh, the first is letting the kick drum or another instrument punch through the mix or punch through another instrument as it's playing. For example, Another use is to create a what's called a pumping effect. For example, now what's happening in both those examples that I just showed you is the same thing. The second sound, or in the first example's case, the bass line, and the second example's case, the white noise, is moving out of the way for the kick drum to come through. Now this technique is especially important when dealing with low frequencies like a kick drum and a bass line. And basically anything in the 150 hertz and below region. Uh, the reason is, is because when sounds around these frequencies are playing at the same time, they tend to conflict. And that's called phase cancellation. So what's happening is the phase of the waveforms are opposite of each other, causing them to cancel out. In other words, you get no bass. So for this example, I've got a kick drum and a bass line. Now when I play these two together, if you have a good enough sound system, you're going to notice that the bass feels kind of bland and not very present. Take a listen. You can tell, hopefully, that these two sounds are fighting for that same low frequency region, around 150 hertz and below. If you can't tell, or you don't have a good enough sound system, um, I want to show you a plugin that I use in almost every single one of my projects, and it's called Wave Candy, and it helps you visualize the frequency space um, depending on whichever sounds are coming through it. So I'm going to throw it on the master channel here. Here it is, Wave Candy, just so uh, we can hear everything that's going on in this project. And right now, it's just the kick drum and the bass line. So those are the only two sounds that are going to come through this thing. So I'm just going to position it up here in the top right. It's kind of the spot I like to keep it. And I'm going to put it on spectrum mode. And I'm going to turn down the update knob and max out the scale knob. Those are the settings I like to use on this thing. So now when I play back the kick drum and the bass line, let's take a look at what um, Wave Candy is showing us. Okay, and I just hit this uh, freeze button here essentially, and that freezes the view of Wave Candy. So right off the bat, I can tell that this is a problem. Um, if you look up here in the top left, the hint bar, as I mouse over a region in Wave Candy, you'll see the frequency spot that the mouse cursor is hovering over. And right about here where the mouse is, is about 159 hertz. So anything from here on down is where the bass comes into play. And I can tell there are conflicts because we have kick drums and bass lines on the same note and the low frequencies are fighting over this space. So what we have here are basically the kick drums. These, those are the L looking things. Those are your kicks. And then the four notes in between all the kicks are your bass notes. So you can see that visually represented down here in the channel rack as well. Uh, kick, 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 and bass lines in between. Kick, 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 bass line notes in between. Now, one way that we can avoid this conflict on the kick is probably the most obvious way and that is to come into the bass line and just get rid of every single note that the kick drum falls on. So now when the kick comes through there's not going to be a competing bass note. Now this is a good technique however there is still going to be a conflict on this second note that plays because the kick 
sort of has a decay time that overlaps into the second note here. Let's see what that looks like in Wave Candy. So as you can see, the initial bass note is gone. There's no conflict there, but this kick is sort of fading into the second note as well. Um, so why not get rid of two notes? Well, we certainly can do that, but then you start altering the nature of your groove. So that sounds like this. And as you can see, now we can clearly see that the kick drum is overlapping into the second note. So in order to make a groove work that you had before, you'll want to use sidechain compression or a method similar to that. If you like the groove that is this sort of dun da da dun da da dun da da na, then you basically don't need sidechain compression. So Let's put the notes back in to get back the groove that we wanted, and let's get on with the methods of sidechain compression. The first method I'm going to show you involves automating the level of the baseline mixer tracks volume. So let's bring up the playlist, and I'm just going to paste in the pattern that we've created. It's just the kick drum and the bass line. And I'm going to come down here to the level of the bass on the mixer track and right click and do create automation clip. And I'm going to resize that so it's only one beat long. So that way I can set my one beat and then just repeat this automation clip throughout the playlist. So what do we want to happen? We want this bass line to get out of the way of the kick. So I'm just going to drop this first node all the way down to zero. And as you can see, the mixer track drops along with it. And... I'm going to paste in the rest of these so we can hear what this sounds like. So if you'll remember, the bass line was only conflicting with the kick on the first two notes. So what we can do now is tell the bass line to come back in at full volume by the time it gets to the third note, which is right here. So I've set my um, grid to snap to half beat. So now that'll let me put in a point right here. So I'm just going to right click and then I'm going to right click on this node and copy its value by hitting C on the keyboard and then right clicking back on the node I just created and hitting P for paste. And that's just going to paste in the value that was on this node right here. So now what's going to happen is the kick is going to come in, the baseline is going to be at zero, and then the baseline is going to fade into full volume by the time it gets to the third note. Let's take a listen. And so now what you can do with this technique is you can sort of tweak the tension of this point here. So you can decide how long it takes to fade into full, or if you want it to quickly fade into full, you would do something like that. Um, and obviously these are all set to taste, um, depending on your situation. Um, another thing I want to point out with this method is one little issue that you'll run into is when you're automating the level of one of these mixer tracks, um, it's going to mess with the fact that you're using these mixer levels to set the overall level of the track when you're doing mix down. So if something's too loud, you'll want to turn it down. But then when this automation clip plays, it's going to turn it back up to whatever volume you have set here. So it kind of gets to be a pain to manage that. So one thing that I recommend you do in that case is to create a second bass channel. And I'm just going to call this one like bass out and what you do is you route the original channel to the bass out channel and then take it off the master so that the bass out channel is the one that's going to go out to master and then you have two levels that you can play with so whichever one you're automating is going to be the one that is opposite the one that you're going to set for your overall volume when you're doing your mix down so for example in this case we're automating this mixer track, so I'm going to use this one over here to set the overall level of whatever I want it to be to make it fit into my mix. That way, th these automation clips will not conflict with this value here. The second method I want to show you is basically, in my opinion, an easier method of doing the one that I just showed you. But it does involve um, a plugin that is not free, but a really awesome, useful one, and that's called LFO Tool. 
Um, it's made by the same guy who made Serum, Steve Duda, and it's just it's an awesome plugin. It's got a lot of great uses. So I'm going to load up the mixer, and I'm going to put LFO Tool on my bass track. And so basically what we have here is a tool that lets you modulate these parameters here. And we're going to be interested in this one, the volume parameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a shape not unlike the one that we just created in the playlist. And by the way, you can hold Alt to snap your points to the grid. And I'm just going to create this slope kind of towards the end so that there are no clicks so it sort of fades out nicely. And so this is going to tell the volume to go from zero to full and then back out down to zero. And in order for that to happen, I do have to turn up this volume parameter all the way up to 100. So that gets the full effect. And then I'm also going to turn this rate down to one fourth. So that means every beat, this is going to happen to the volume. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. And let me turn it off just for comparison. And back on again. So one way you can modulate the effect of the sidechain compression from LFO tool is you can automate this dry wet knob down here. So with it all the way on, the sidechain effect is enabled and then if you want to disable it you just bring this knob all the way down to zero like i said you can automate this knob in the playlist view the third method i'm going to show you involves using the fruity peak controller so i'm just going to open the mixer and come over to the kick track and i'm going to put the peak controller on this track so this plugin basically acts as a controller that lets you use the signal that whatever mixer track you've put it on to modulate something and it also has an LFO controller built in but we're gonna just worry about this peak section for now so these four controls here are basically gonna be used to shape the effect that the peak controller modulates a signal so the bass knob tells it where is the sound at bass level in other words, when the kick is not coming through, what level should whatever I'm modulating be at? The volume knob tells it what level to drop or raise to when the peak comes through. The tension knob tells it how fast or how slow to transition between the two. And the decay knob tells it basically how fast to reset back to zero. If if that was confusing, don't worry. I'm gonna basically link this controller to the base knob and I'm gonna tweak these settings and you'll be able to visually see and hear the effect that it's having on the sound. Let's go. So I'm gonna come down to the mixer and link the level of the base to the peak of the peak controller. Okay, I'm gonna hit accept. So let's go ahead and play and just see what happens here. Okay, so now I got some tweaking to do to get this thing right. So I'm gonna play it through and I'm gonna tweak it as it's playing. Let's see what I come up with. That sounds good to me. The fourth and final method I'm going to show you guys on how to sidechain compress or sidechain duck a sound involves the compressor. It has arrived. It is here. The reason you guys clicked on this video. Just kidding. The other three methods are just as awesome. So let's go ahead and load up 
a fruity limiter on this track. Now, I already have one, but I was just using this one to compress the sound for some more beefy stuff. By the way, if you haven't seen my tutorial on compression, uh, you should definitely check that out. I'll put an annotation or whatever for that here. But we're going to use a separate fruity limiter for the sidechain compression component. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the baseline track, and I'm going to go over to the comp tab. Now, what we do with compression is we squish sounds. So what we're going to do here is we're going to squish the sound to basically be the level that we want it to be when the kick drum is coming through. So we want to squish this pretty well, and let's do that now. So I'm going to play it back, and then I'm going to squish it. Okay, so now that is very compressed. As you can see, there's no real conflicts as the, the volume is really low on this thing. But we don't want this effect to happen all the time. So what we need to do is we need to side chain the kick track to the bass track. So let's come over to the kick track and we're gonna click to send the signal to the bass track. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this volume knob all the way down and this is what a sidechain send looks like. You're sending the signal to the bass track, but you're not sending the audio. So now on the bass track, when we load up Fruity Limiter, this little sidechain doohickey right here, we can right click on it and hit kick. Now it, it knows that kick is being sidechained to this mixer track because we did it over here. If I take it off the mixer track, as you can see, there's nothing in this list. So as soon as I sidechain or send a signal to the bass track it knows it's there when i right click it lets me choose it all right let's play it back and see what we got and before i do that i'm just going to increase the resolution on this compressor so we can see what's going on in more detail now it looks like it's sort of doing what we want it's compressing these first two notes but it's sort of bleeding over into this third note so what, what can we do about that? Well, that's where this release knob comes into play. The release basically tells the compressor how long to hang around before letting up. So if we turn down the release, we should be able to solve this little problem and be on our merry little way. Let's give it a shot. How beautiful is that? Um, out of the four methods that I showed you, I'd probably say that the second one using LFO tool is my go-to method. And no, it's not because I'm sponsored by them, but it just seems to be the quickest way for me to get the results that I want. But all these methods have their place and I've used them all throughout the years of producing. So I recommend you guys learn these methods, know these methods, get good at these methods and who knows you might even come up with your own method that works even better than the ones I showed you in this video. If you have any questions or anything was unclear please let me know and I'll be happy to help. Otherwise if you found this video helpful and you learned something uh, please give it a like and consider subscribing because there will be much more awesome tutorials to come. If you have any suggestions for future videos or tutorials you'd like to see from me please let me know as well. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video.